Hello, this is Patty Mantia, and I'm here to talk with you today about body composition or the ratio of fat free versus fat mass. And we know that ratio is very important for health, that having a high level of body fat presents risk of diseases such as heart disease, pulmonary disease, and metabolic diseases. There are several methods that we can use to assess body composition most accurate of which are hydrostatic or underwater weighing and DEXA or dual x-ray absorptometry. These are each 99% accurate. The bod pod is also very accurate, um, but like the first two, bod pod, DEXA, and hydrostatic weighing are not readily available in health clubs, and so we often have to rely on methods such as skinfold calipers, BMI, waist hip ratios, and even circumference measurements. BMI or body mass index, although it may not be a perfect formula, it does give us a quick guide to uh, is this person within an appropriate range of height versus weight. We know that it probably won't be a real accurate reflection of health for someone who's very muscular, but for the average person, it can give us a, a guide. Using the metric system, the formula is weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. And there's just a few easy steps to do this calculation. The first of which is to convert the body weight from pounds into kilograms. To do that, you can multiply the pound weight by 0.45 or divide the pound weight by 2.2. Either method is acceptable and they come within a very close range. To calculate the height from feet and inches to meters squared, you first have to convert the height from feet and inches to inches and then divide the height and inches by 39 to calculate meters because there are 39 inches in one meter. And then you would square that number. The final step is divide the weight by the height. A BMI under 18.5 would be considered underweight. 18.5 to 24.9 would be normal. And 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight. Obesity begins at or greater than 30, a BMI of 30. Using the metric system, let's do an example. We have a 5 pound, 10 inch, sorry, 5 feet, 10 inch, tall person who weighs 190 pounds. Let's start by first converting the pound weight to kilograms by multiplying by 0.45. 190 times 0.45 is 85.5 or rounded up would be 86. The other method we could do would be to take that 190 and divide it by 2.2 which would give us 86.36 kilograms. But if we round it down, it would be 86. So either way, we have a weight of 86 kilograms. Our next step is to convert the 5 feet 10 inches into inches. So 5 feet is 60 plus 10 brings us to 70 inches. Divide it by 39 to get meters, which brings us to 1.8 meters, which is rounded up. And then we would square that number or multiply it by itself to get 3.24. So if we take our weight of 86 kilograms divided by our height of 3.24 meters squared, we end up with 26.54 kilograms per meter squared or rounded up, we'd get 27. If we do the same formula Using the American system, we take our weight in pounds times 703 and divide it by height in inches squared. Same person, 5 feet 10 inch tall, 190 pounds. Let's take the weight first. 190 pounds times 703 is 133,570. That's our weight. To calculate our height, we have 5 feet 10 inches is 60 inches plus 10, or 70 inches. And if you square that or multiply it by itself, you get 4,900. So we take this weight 
divided by this height, and that brings us to 27.26, or rounded down, brings us to 27. So each method, rounded up or rounded down, came to 27. Waist-hip ratio is fairly simple as well. Take the measurement of the waist at the smallest part, and measure the hips at the widest part just above the gluteal fold, and then divide the waist by the hip. For a man, the waist should be equal to or greater than, sorry, the waist should be equal to or less than the hips. So when you divide the waist by the hip, it should come out less than 0.95 to be a desirable range or a desirable weight, and that's about a one-to-one -one ratio. For a woman, the waist should actually be smaller than her hips. So when you divide the waist by the hips, it should come out to less than 0.86, or about a 0.8 to 1 ratio. Let's look at two examples. Let's say we have a male with a waist of 39 inches and hips of 40. When you divide that waist by the hip, you come out with 0. 9.75 or round it up to point, that should be a point there, 0.98. And we know that the man should be under 0.95, so this man is slightly over the desired range. Let's say we have a female with a waist of 38 inches and hips of 37. 38 divided by 37 comes out to 1.027. And we know she should be below 0.86, so she's well over the desired range. You can also do a measurement of the waist and just use that as your guide to um, if they have too much stored body fat, particularly in the abdominal region. A woman should be under 27.5 inches or 70 centimeters to be considered low risk and a woman over or equal to or greater than 35 inches or equal to or greater than 88 centimeters would be considered at risk. For males, the numbers are going to be a little higher. The male should be under 30.1.5 inches or less than 80 centimeters to be in the low risk category. And a male above, equal to or greater than 40 inches or equal to or greater than 102 centimeters would be considered at risk. What's the best way to lose fat? The question, the million dollar question. Reduce the caloric intake, increase caloric expenditure. Eat less, work out more. If calories in equals calories out, the weight will stay the same. If calories in exceeds the calories out, one will gain weight. To lose one pound, you have to eliminate 3,500 calories, either through decreased intake or increased output. To lose one pound a week, you'd have to eliminate 500 calories or kilocalories per day. So that might be something such as um, taking away the ice cream at the end of the night or chips or whatever and adding an extra half hour brisk walk. To lose two pounds a week, you'd have to eliminate a thousand calories per day, which would be a little more difficult, but certainly doable. And that's really the highest you want to do. No, you don't really want to shoot for losing more than two pounds per week. You can, however, teach your clients portion control and teach them how to read food labels. How to read a food label. First thing, look at the serving size. Look at the grams of each of the nutrients. And remember, one gram of fat has nine kilocalories. Protein and carbohydrates have four kilocalories per gram. Alcohol, by the way, has a whopping seven kilocalories per gram. And those are not nutrient-dense calories. So to calculate the percentage of a particular nutrient, you divide the calories of that nutrient by the total calories. So let's take a look. 
Remember, step one is look at the serving size. How many are there per container? If you're going to have two boxes of macaroni and cheese, you can't call that 250 calories. That would be 4 times 250. So you have to be honest about this. This label provides you with how many calories from fat, but if they didn't, you could just figure that out here. It has 12 grams of fat at 9 calories each. So 12 times 9 is 108 calories from fat out of 250. When you divide that out, 108 fat calories by 250 total, we see this product is 43% fat. Now, it looks like the fat is 18%, but that's 18% of the daily value. So you have to be careful how you look at this. Here's another example I see students uh, get wrong frequently. How much fat does 2% milk have? And the answer is often 2%. But if you look at the label, there's 120 calories in an 8-ounce cup. That has 5 grams of fat, which has 45 total calories, right? 5 times 9 is 45. If 45 out of 120 calories are from fat, right away you can see it's about a third. And in fact, it's 37.5 or 38% fat. And yet it looks at a glance like this is 8% fat, or maybe 2% fat, but in fact it's 38% fat. McDonald's double cheeseburger has 440 calories per serving, 23 grams of fat, 23 grams at 9 calories each equals 207 calories from fat out of 440. If you divide this out, you get 47% fat. So pretty high in fat. If you did this occasionally, it would probably be okay, but you wouldn't want this to be part of your daily regimen. And don't be fooled by this label. This is 30% of the daily intake. You can use the same formula to convert protein or carbohydrates. If this cheeseburger has 25 grams of protein at 4 calories each, that's 100 out of 440. So about 20.227 or 23% protein. With 34 grams of carbs at 4 calories each, that's 136 calories from carbohydrates out of 440. So that's just about 31% rounded up. So let's add these up. We have 47% fat plus 23% protein. That brings us to 70% and 31% carbs. So out of this these three nutrients, it adds up to 101%, which is okay because they are allowed a slight margin of error. The recommended daily intake is usually based on a 2,000 calorie diet and carbohydrates should be about 60%. You'll see various numbers, 45 to 60, 40 to 65. Protein should be about 10 to 35% of the intake or more frequently used is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight for the non-athlete and as high as 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight for the athlete. Fat should be about 25 to 30. And again, these numbers should add up to 100. To calculate the nutrient needs, let's say we're going to look at carbohydrates based on a 2,000 calorie diet. 60% of 2,000 is 1,200. So of all the calories in a day, 1,200 should come in from carbs. Or if you want to convert that to grams, you divide by 4. So about 300 grams of carbohydrates. You can also calculate grams per kilogram of body weight. So 6 to 10 grams would be recommended for each kilogram. So somewhere between 540 to 900 grams or divided out or multiplied out would be about 2,160 calories 
from carbs or 3,600. And again, this wouldn't fit in a 2,000 calorie a day diet. For protein, 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So you convert your body weight to kilograms, multiply it by 0.8, and that tells you how many grams you would need per day. Again, this would be for the non-athlete. To convert that to calories, you're going to just multiply by 4. For an athlete, an endurance athlete, you might want 1.2 grams per kilogram. So again, for that 200 pound or 90 kilogram athlete, 1.2 times 90 is 108 grams. Or if you want to talk calories, you'd multiply that by 4 and get 432 calories. The athlete, notice, would be a much higher level, 1.7 for each of the 90 kilograms of body weight would equal 153 grams or 612 calories. Fat should be no more than 20 to 35 percent of the daily intake. So based on a 2,000 calorie a day diet, about 400 calories should come from fat. Or if you want to convert that to grams, you would divide by 9, and that would give you about 44.44. So 44 percent, or uh, sorry, grams of fat. The high range, 35 percent of 2,000 calorie day diet would be 700 calories from fat, or divided by 9, you could convert that to 78 grams, went rounded up. And that is the end of this video. Hopefully you learned how to do some conversions and how to calculate body comp. Good luck with your clients. Thank you for watching this video.